What up, what up, what up? Today is the uh, the uh, post day after uh, Nipsey's memorial. In the vein of that, uh, we're here now live with a, I hate to use the term legend because it's been used a lot now, but we're here now with a. Yeah, they, they, they use that lightly now. I know. Uh, definitely Everybody with a. I'm, I'm going to use the term pioneer. Oh, I like that one. Pioneer. I like that. I'm going to say super producer. I like that. Uh, one of the uh, the found the founders of the landscape of L.A., Compton, California hip-hop. I like that. And that, that happens to get, you know, then we go on to say West Coast, which is Arizona, right, Seattle, right. and all that, but I, I don't remember. Anyway, um, another question, another thing. Anyway, today we're here live with super producer, Sir Jinx, you know him from some of the greatness he's been a part of. Um, I'm gonna let him get into his music background at the start of that. But for me, for us, those of hip hop generation one, he is uh, associated with some of the great um, album Five Mike albums. Uh, Cube has uh, Ice Cube has uh, wrote and produced too. Right. Produced, yeah. but definitely uh, uh, the highlight Jinx is mentioned. And I'm sorry, Jinx is seen and and, and pointed out. In the blockbuster Strata Compton that came out a few years ago, man had a lot of great success. A lot of great success. He's definitely uh, the uh, landscape maker on the great album American Most Wanted, Ice Cube's Death Album. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Which, which one? Which one? Uh, America's Most Wanted. Most Wanted. Yeah. Right. American, that was his yeah, debut album, right? That certificate. Uh, 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 most of all the um, um, Cube stuff I had kind of a little hand in. Right, because you know? your name is mentioned throughout all of his uh, his success moving Lethal on. Lethal Injection. Exactly. <laughs> all these is like classic, classic albums. Um, I'm going to get into... Can't forget about Coogee Rap. When I did the Coogee Rap. Thing. No, let's get into... Okay, yeah. let's... let's I'm going to start with Strata Compton. Huh? Live and Let Die was the name of the, of the, of the record I did with uh, Coogee Rap. And that's uh, one of the things where... Uh, Back in them days, you know, people didn't work with each other like that, you know. And uh, I was probably the first person to produce a whole East Coast rapper's album in history. Did not know Rap, that. hip-hop history. Did yeah. not know that. So, obviously, this is going to be part one. The part one <laughs> Everybody said that. Obviously. <laughs> and uh, not to leave nobody out, I'm here with my man Derail. He came That's with right. Sir Jinx, and I'm sure he got some input on some information that we, us fans, fans have never, you know, really been, been uh Privy to so um, I did not know about this about the Scoochie rap. Mm -hmm. What year was that? Do you remember? Uh, 92, 92, 91, 92. Okay, back to ninety two again. Okay, so ninety two was a big year. It's a good I'm year. I'm knowing, but what, what, what was it feel like working with Coogee rap? I mean, it, it was, at first. <clears throat> you know, shout out to Karen Jones and, and Benny Medina that that hooked that hooked us up together, and they didn't know if we was gonna get along, or, you know, because we we didn't really know each other All like right. that. But as soon as he uh, came to L.A., I mean, it was like having a brother, man. He, he's, he, he's mad funny. He do jokes. I mean, he's, he's like a laid-back kind of guy. And uh, he's very talented. So, you know, he, he raises the bar when it comes to uh, rapping and putting wordplay together and, and, and stuff like that. And it was kind of ironic that he can rap real fast, but he also has a lisp. So... That was always dope to right, me. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Like some people uh, uh, take hip hop differently. Like, oh, I can't do it. I, you know, I got lits. Right. You know, like a Mike Tyson kind of thing. But uh, his raps is, uh, you know, nobody can. I, he's one of the top rappers that I've worked with. Okay, that was the question that was coming lyrics. up. Okay, Coogee Rap. Uh, my first impression of him when I first heard him was 80, 88, summer '88. My cousin from Brooklyn came out here to visit. They first time being here, they had watched a lot of movies and mm -hmm. learned a lot before they left. But mm -hmm. they brought his music along, so yeah, the and lifts, probably like the, Road to Riches, and, yeah, the, 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 the talk lifts, like sex, the, sim the symphony, all that. Right, right, right. Exactly. That was like he embraced that. Uh, <clears throat> I want to go back to Strata Compton. Right. Uh, your impressions on your scene in Strata mm -hmm. Compton, and then the question is: There's a lot of artists who were signed directly to Ruthless and or around Ruthless who weren't mentioned in the film. Mm -hmm. Just how you feel about that? Well, <clears throat> everybody played their part. You know what I'm saying? Okay. This is like any good any good production or any good idea. Right. So if, if, if somebody wasn't mentioned where they should have been mentioned, 
if, 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 if they would have mentioned everybody, the movie would have been about six hours long. Okay. So it was the people that wrote the movie that cared about the characters that made the movie, you know, understandable. Okay. If you have too many characters in a movie, it's all over the place. You know, you're like, how, how come they didn't develop that character? Right. Who is that person? Right, right. And some of it just wasn't wasn't important <clears throat> to to the NWA story. Right, right. You I know, get know. It. But Not so much to the artists, but just to the executives right, in charge right, trying, right. To, trying, you know to, trying to make a big movie. Right, 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 right. You can't go in there making no uh, movie about your childhood and name all your teachers right, right, and right, the people right. in your class got, right. got you know, dialogue. <laughs> that's yeah, watching no, That's right, watching right. The, the hot water boil, pretty much. Right, right, right. Uh, but now, you made it in there. I was, I was privileged to see uh, the film with uh, the DPG, I don't know how that happened, but anyway, mm -hmm. but you you were in there, and, right. and it was like for some people from LA, looking at you as a, a pioneer. I want to say legend too, a pioneer, right. and then you know just seeing somebody from LA on screen superimposed, like because that film went international, right? Iran, Japan. Like I think Iran. it's the second, it's the second highest documentary movie of all time. And my question is, how, how how you feel about that? How do your family feel about that? Well, when, uh, I mean, I had my own rooting section, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody that, you know, knew of the, the story already. And, you know, people was like, how can they do this story and and take you out of the story? Like, mm -hmm. how, how could that happen? But easily it could have happened, you know what I mean? Like, easily they could have just, oh, dream it, Q better stop sign you know what I'm saying they, they <laughs> right. could have just but um, it, it made it make more sense because I was in the next part of the movie when Cube left so that's one thing that like a lot of people that wasn't mentioned probably you had to develop that character you know okay. and, and they didn't keep going throughout the movie so you know in movies you gotta have that one person right. that, that, that goes throughout the movie correct so.